So before this season started, and we were looking at the Capitals, and uh, I, I made a number of statements about how um, I thought their depth had taken a hit. Now, Devontae smith Pelly is a really good example of this and how I was wrong. Um, he's drafted 42nd overall in 2012 by the Anaheim Ducks. Plays 49 games in 2011-2012. That's not 2012. He wasn't drafted in 2012. All right. Because um, he doesn't play in 11 and 12 if he drafted in 2012. He's drafted in 2010. Okay, so that, that being said, I'll go ahead and change that to a 2010. But um, he's a second-round draft pick. He's their third pick. Uh, Anaheim had had two picks before him, and you know, un, unremarkable bottom six guy is, is and that's that's a compliment. Uh, 2012, 2013, he plays seven games. He's he's going back and forth between the minors and and the NHL. Uh, he's just one of those guys you don't pay a whole lot of attention to if you're not an Anaheim Ducks fan. Uh, 2013, 14, 19 games played, two goals, eight assists, ten points, and then in the playoffs, he plays 12 games and has five goals. So this is not his first go-around as a guy who scores goals in the playoffs. And there are those guys. And, of course, John Drews is the ultimate example, right? Um, John Drews scored 14 goals in one playoff year for the Capitals. And everybody was all excited that maybe this guy was emerging as a superstar. The funny part about it is we remember John Drews as being a playoff superstar. And he actually had a half-decent career. And he put up some decent numbers following that 14-goal playoff. But he never got up to the level that people thought he was going to be at. Um, in 2014-15, he plays 54 games for Anaheim, so he does not go to the minors that year. Five goals, 12 assists, gets traded to the Montreal Canadiens for Erie Seacash. Uh, 20 games played in Montreal, one goal, two assists, three points. In the playoffs, plays 12 games, one goal, two assists, three points. Again, this is your this is your depth guy. This is your bottom six guy, right? 15-16, plays 46 games in Montreal, 6 goals, 6 assists, gets traded to New Jersey for Stefan Matteau. Notice he's been traded twice for players who are not in the NHL. Uh, in New Jersey, he plays 18 games, has 8 goals, 5 assists, 13 points. And there was some talk at the end of that year with the amount of points that he put up as, hey, maybe he'll realize his, his potential in New Jersey. So, nice contract. He settled in New Jersey. 53 games last year. Four goals, five assists, nine points, and he gets bought out. The New Jersey Devils, who missed the playoffs, ended up with the number one draft pick, say, you know what? We're going to move on from Devontae smith Pelly. We're going to buy him out. So he gets bought out July 1st. He doesn't get signed. And, and he's one of those guys who gets signed after July 1st. There's two reasons you get signed after July 1st. Um, there's no bidding war, or you're not the first one on their list of guys they're looking at. Um, because you're able to negotiate with the UFAs now before July 1st. So a lot of guys get signed on July 1st. 75 games this year, 7 goals, 9 assists, 16 points. And and how I viewed it was this. Uh, the Washington Capitals had lost a, a number of guys in the offseason uh, already at this point on July 3rd. And the idea was um, they just had to sign guys and, and put together a team, put a team on the ice. GM coming into this year is like, yeah, our window's probably closed, but we'll see what happens. Um, those seven goals and nine assists, again, it, it doesn't differentiate him from other bottom six forwards in the NHL. You can't measure heart. You really can't. Um, in the playoffs this year, 24 games, seven goals, one assist, eight points. Coming into the final, He's a, a, a scrappy bottom six guy, not a ton of goals. Now, he's a restricted free agent this summer. This is what you're looking at. He he shouldn't... He, I know he's, he's a folk hero right now in Washington, but he probably doesn't get a big raise. Now, he probably stays in Washington and probably gets a two- or three-year contract out of it. But this is that tricky part. This is that part where... You're asking yourself, okay, so next year, do you expect 15 goals out of him? Because you might be disappointed because he's he's never achieved that in his NHL career. He got 14 here, and that's with the eight he got in 18 games in New Jersey. So he's not really that offensive guy that we kind of saw in the finals this year. What we saw in the finals this year 
was different than he's been other years and in the regular season. It's a good story because for those of us who just took Washington for granted as, oh, these guys are probably first or second round fodder, they proved us wrong. And while we can all talk about Ovechkin and Kuznetsov and how great a playoff these guys all had, without the yeoman's work of guys like like Smith Pelly, and there are other members of the Capitals that I'm going to take a look at in the coming days, without the work these guys did, the Capitals don't raise the cup last night. Because the, the big reason that the Capitals took so long to get here, other than just simple puck luck, is that their, their depth scoring in playoffs, combined with whether Ovechkin was hot or cold, it always ended up being that Ovechkin would turn cold and their depth scoring would fall apart at the same time. Look at the conversation we're having a year ago about Ovechkin and how he looked kind of slow. He was on the third line at the end of the playoffs. And uh-oh, we're, you know, maybe he's on the downturn and now suddenly he's a Stanley Cup champ. So there's probably a team out there that we're, we're browbeating right now that could very well be holding up the cup next year. But uh, Smith Pelly had a really solid playoffs. I figured he deserved to be mentioned in his own on his own video. Um, because it's it's one of those things where you look at those seven goals in the playoffs and you look at when they were scored in the final. I think he had four in the finals, three or four in the finals. And that's what you want. You want a guy who had biggest game. He's like, all right, I'll do this. And he, it's not like he was scoring garbage goals either. He was he they were they were nice goals. And uh, we'll see what he does next year. And how much do you think he gets paid and for how long? It's more for Capitals fans, I think, than for, for, for a lot of others, the rest of us. But uh, it's an interesting topic because as a restricted free agent, of course, they're going to have to sit down and talk it over. He's not going anywhere else. And what the Capitals do to keep their depth and keep a guy like Carlson, too. Uh, if they can keep this whole team together, they can go on another run. But uh, it's, it's going to be tricky. So let me know your thoughts on Smith Pelly. What is he going forward? Can he maintain that in the next year? How many goals does he get next year? How many points does he get? Does he hit, say, 12 goals, 30 points, that kind of thing? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. I'll talk to you again soon.